During Sunday's All-Star Game, Jazz fans momentarily thought they were being treated to a rare opportunity. Team Durant's Donovan Mitchell came bursting down the lane and took a pass and looked primed to throw down one of his signature tomahawks on none other than Jazz teammate Rudy Gobert, who at this point was playing for Team LeBron. We've seen Donovan cram it in this spot numerous times in his career, including over seven footers. Remember this one from last year on fellow 21 All-Star Nick Vucevic? Point, make that 12 on the night. Donovan hammers it! Sunday, Donovan had a chance to do that to his own teammate. It would have led Sports Center. Think of the locker room bragging rights Donovan would have had forever. But instead, nope. Mitchell deferred the opportunity and Team Durant eventually turned the ball over. Wah, wah. Thing is, what Donovan did there is par for the Gobert course. It's rim deterrence at its finest, and it's one of Rudy's most underrated skills. Partially because it's so hard to define or quantify, but that's what Jazz Film Room is here for, and we're going to take a crack at it. If you looked only at the raw numbers without any context, you might laugh at me for using the term deterrence with Gobert. Per tracking data seen here via NBA.com, no player in the league has contested more shots than Rudy. This second chart here shows that only Indiana's Miles Turner has been the primary defender on more attempts at the rim. If that's the case, is Gobert really deterring attempts at the rim, the most valuable real estate on the floor for the offense? Simply put, yes, he is. Some of the examples are easy to spot visually, like Boston's Peyton Pritchard here doing a terrified 180 when he sees Gobert lurking on his drive. Instead, the Celtics settle for a long J from Robert Williams III, the Time Lord, who has made a grand total of four shots outside 16 feet in his entire NBA career. Sometimes it takes a bit of a more careful eye to spot it, like on this play against the Miami Heat. The first example of Rudy's impact is pretty straightforward. He cuts off the paint to Jimmy Butler here, stopping easy penetration. But as is so often the case with the Heat and Eric Spolstra, that's a decoy. The real action is Duncan Robinson sneaking behind Gobert to screen him, with the hope of springing Bam out of bio for a lob. Gobert figures out what's going on, though, and he's moving by the time Butler picks up his dribble to throw the lob, scaring him out of it. Then, a few seconds later, Rudy again walls off the paint to force a tough step-back jumper from Butler. That's three rim deterrences in one possession. If you're watching closely, you can find dozens of these plays every game. Let's count the times Gobert deterred the Knicks from shots near the basket on this play. First, he sticks with Austin Rivers off the pick and roll, and Rivers is not interested in challenging him. So he dishes to the cutting Alfred Payton, but even with Gobert several feet away and between bodies, his reputation precedes him. Payton wants none of this either. Eventually, Payton takes a prayer of a floater with the shot clock winding down. Good on him for making it, but the Jazz will take that shot all day. More on this theme in just a little bit. Some of these we've shown so far are pretty simple plays, the type at least some other bigs in the league are capable of to varying degrees, even if the consensus is pretty clear that Rudy is the apex of this model. But some plays also aren't like that at all, like this one, which I honestly think very few players in today's NBA besides Gobert have both the physical and mental skill to pull off. The play, which comes against the Pelicans, starts with New Orleans running a basic decoy pick and roll at Gobert, which he's not bothered by at all given the personnel and is hanging back. The ball reverses to the middle of the floor, and at this point, a common set that Jazz have seen a hundred times against the Pels is Brandon Ingram sprinting up the opposite wing for an outlet to run a play. You can see Joe Ingles playing above Ingram to stop this from happening, but you also see Ingram smartly recognize this, pivoting into a back cut that wrong foots Ingles. But within instants, even as Willie Hernan Gomez is releasing the pass, Gobert has spotted what's happening here and is moving to cut off the threat. Disagree with me if you like, but in my opinion, among current players, only Rudy and Joel Embiid are capable of preventing even so much as a shot attempt here. But that's exactly what happens. New Orleans resets and Hernan Gomez is eventually called for a moving screen turnover, though even if he hadn't been, once again, here's Rudy terrifying another guard into taking a crappy floater instead of challenging him at the basket. That leads us conveniently into some very simple data that shows clearly just how impactful Gobert's rim deterrence really is. What you're looking at here is Rudy's on and off court page via cleaning the glass, specifically with regard to opponent shot frequency, how often the opponent shoots from each area of the court. The orange and blue tabs represent league-wide percentiles, the former high and the latter low, while the percentages beside them show the difference in the percentage of shots the Jazz allow from each location with Gobert on the floor versus off of it. If you're confused, just have a look at the rim column going back to Rudy's rookie year. Every single season, eight in a row, the Jazz have allowed way fewer attempts at the rim when Gobert is on the court than when he's off, typically by a number above the NBA's 95th percentile for his position. In fact, Rudy is posting one of the single largest such gaps in the league this year among high minutes players, as you see here on this chart. 
and he does this every year. There's just no way this is random noise or even a case of bad backups inflating the numbers, which you do sometimes see. Across this sample, that's not realistic. Meanwhile, look back at Gobert's mid-range columns in terms of opponent shot frequency. You see those are almost exclusively blue. That's because Cleaning the Glass considers these worse shots based on their average efficiency across the league over years. Having more of them is bad, but that's exactly what happens to teams when they're playing against Rudy. They stop getting to the rim and instead start settling for mid-range shots, both long and short. The latter of these tend to be mostly floater type shots, which we talked about before. If you look closely, you can pinpoint the exact moment where Gobert changes a guy's mind. Danny Green here decides he's going to stretch his skill set a bit, and he's probably feeling pretty good about himself right now after getting Donovan Mitchell off balance and finding his way into the lane. But notice his head is down as he navigates what's not exactly the best handle in the NBA. No offense, Danny. Now he looks up. Merde, if you'll excuse my French. Green aborts any prior plans and tosses up a floater that barely even hits the rim. This happens all the time, a direct part of the way Quinn Snyder designs the D around Rudy. These are just horrible shots. Gobert might as well be laughing as he turns into rebounding position. Hell, Rudy regularly even blocks these supposedly safer shots he baits guys into taking. Again, you kind of just feel bad for Michael Carter-Williams here. This is mean. It's no surprise, then, to see that according to Second Spectrum data provided by a source, the Jazz forced the second highest rate of floaters from their opponents in the league. They only trail the LA Clippers, who are actually forcing a scary number of these, as you can see here. Watch out for that defense in the playoffs, folks. Back to the Jazz, again, this is systemic and purposeful. League average field goal percentage on floaters this season is just 42.2%, which for the uninitiated is really bad. It's a win for the defense almost every time one of these shots goes up, especially if it's contested at all. By now, though, the fear often does the work on Rudy's behalf. Look at Eric Bledsoe here, stoked on his drive and ready to take flight. And then he sees Gobert and actually airballs a five-footer. Oh no. Rudy Gobert gets a lot of credit, and deservedly so, for all the shots he contests. Rim protectors inherently hold special value on defense because it's way harder to scheme around them than even the best wings. The rim area, after all, is pretty small when compared with the size of the three-point arc, which one single player cannot defend on his own. One great interior guy, though, can hold an entire defense up, as Rudy proves year after year as the best the game has in this role. But even if they're harder to see and quantify, just as much of this is about the shots he prevents from ever happening in the first place.